Defining and applying similarity. And we're looking at angle, angle, ooh. Angle, angle, side, angle, side, and side, side, side. Okay, objectives. We're gonna decide if two triangles are similar and what are the shortcuts of determining if triangles are similar. Okay, so our vocabulary. Corresponding sides are congruent. So corresponding sides means that AC and the corresponding side to this one would be DF. Oh, sorry, that says angles. Got ahead of myself. Corresponding angles are congruent. So if we're looking at this, it's angle A is congruent to angle D, right? That's notated by that single arc on it. Angle B, we see two arcs here. We see two arcs here. Angle B and E are similar. And then likely for C, we have three arcs and then F, three arcs. So those are, are the same angle measures. So A, D, B and E, C and F. Okay. Now the sides. Okay. So corresponding sides are proportional. That means that the proportion between A, C and D, F so AC divided by DF is going to equal to AB and DE. And then last, CB, FE. Okay, so all those sides are the same proportion. Uh, remember in that last, in the last lesson when we did the scale factor? Um, it is the same concept here. The sides are proportional. The corresponding sides are proportional. All right. Now the similarity statement. So similarity statement is pretty much writing the triangle's similarity. So we're putting it in, in this notation here. So notice for triangle ABC and triangle DEF, so for triangle ABC, we started with angle A, right? So if we start with angle A here, for the other similarity statement, we have to start with, this, with the corresponding angle. So we've got to start with D. Okay, so from A it goes to B. B had the two hash marks. So for this triangle, it has to go to E. And then lastly, we join it at F. Okay, so keep those consistent. Our prereqs. So first one, let's go ahead and do the working with proportions. So remember, anytime you have two proportions that are equal to one another, or two fractions that are equal to one another, you can go ahead and cross multiply. Okay, so this will be 16 times 3 is equal to 4 times x plus 1. We're going to have to distribute that 4 before we do any simplifying. Or, I mean, we could, 16 times 3, it's whatever you're most comfortable with, is 48. So we could do 48 equals 4 times x plus 1. And then what we can do is divide both sides by 4. Before we even distribute, that gets rid of the 4. So 12 equals x plus 1. And then we can subtract the 1 away, subtract the 1 away. And we get that x equals 11, okay? Or let's do it with us distributing it. So if we distribute it, this still equals 48, equals 4 times x gives us 4x. Four, 4 times 1 gives us 4, plus 4. Okay, now we simplify for x. We subtract 4 on the right side, subtract 4 on the left side we have 44 equals 4x. And lastly, divide by 4, divide by 4, and we get that x equals 11. So either way you do it, you come up with the same answer. Okay, now let's do the bottom one. So we start off the same way. We've got, two, uh, we've got fractions set equal to one another. We're going to cross multiply. We have 1 times 7x, anything times 1 is itself, so it's up to you if you want to write that, equals oops, 3 
times 2x plus 1. Okay, and I'm going to simplify this out. So we got 7x equals 6x plus 3. Subtract 6x, subtract 6x. And I get that x equals 3. Okay, and you can always plug it back in to, to check. All right, so let's say we want to plug it back in here after we get x equals 3. So this is 1 over 2 times 3 plus 1 is equal to 3 over 7 times 3. So 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7. That's 1 7 equals 3 over 7 times 3 is 21. And if we reduce this down, that is 1 7. You can divide top and bottom by 3. So checks out. All right, converting feet and inches to decimals. This will be important to this section um, because it is going to throw your answer off a bit if you leave it um, in this notation here. But we want to make it so it's all feet. So what we do, we have 10 whole feet, and then we have 3 inches. So that's not a full foot. So we're going to have some kind of decimal. So we're going to take this 3 inches. Okay, I'm going to pull it to the side for a bit. And... I'm going to take my 3 inches and divide it by 12 because there's 12 inches in a foot. Okay, And I want to get that decimal because 3 inches, so we take the 3 inches, we do 3 divided by 12. That gives us the decimal form of feet. So 3 inches, when we put this in the calculator, is 0.25 feet. So this here will turn into 10.25 So if you were to keep it, let's say you wanted it, and this is incorrect if you do this, if you just make this 10.3 feet, right? This is incorrect, incorrect. Let me put it in red to emphasize it. If we do this, it is going to throw our answer off, right? Because we should be computing with 0.25, not 0.3, okay? So make sure that you are converting your inches. Are the triangles to the right similar? Okay, so corresponding, so we gotta check to see, are the corresponding sides congruent? Are angles congruent? And are the corresponding sides proportional? Okay, let's look at the angles. Remember, we want the angles to match up. So if one has a, let's say it has a 90 degree angle, we want the other one to make sure it has a 90 degree angle. So let's start with A. A looks like it is 50 degrees. That's good. B is 30 degrees. And C is 100 degrees. Okay. Now we look at the other triangle. It has a 50 degree. Angle D is 50 degrees. Angle E is 30 degrees. And lastly, angle F is 100 degrees. So it's proportional. Right, they're congruent. The sides are congruent. They each have a 50 degree. They each have a 30 degree. Whoa. And they each have a 100 degree. So these triangles are congruent. Okay. Now let's check to see the sides. Corresponding sides are proportional. We can put a little check mark there. Ting. Corresponding sides are proportional. So let's look at the sides. If we look at AB, Okay, that goes from 50 degrees to 30 degrees. So 50 degrees to 30 degrees, 50 to 30 is going to be ED. Okay, so these are oriented differently. So one is twisted around. So AB is 7.71. Let me rewrite that. That's not nice. 7.71 over DE is 15.42. Okay. Now let's look at AC. Goes from 50 degrees to 100 degrees. So 50 degrees to 100 degrees. I'm looking at DF. 
So 3.92 over 7.84. And finally, CB is 6, which is going to match up to EF is 12. Okay, so let's see if the corresponding sides are proportional. So we're going to divide each of these out. And it looks like we can already get this one here, right? That's half, so that's we know that's 0. 0.5. So we've got to make sure they're all 0. 0.5. 7.71 divided by 15.42 gives us 0. 0.5 exactly. So, so far we're good. And the last one, 3.92 divided by 7.84, 0. 0.5. They're all proportional. So that is also a check. Okay, now our shortcut, similarity shortcut. So let's say we're just looking at triangles and we wanna to get to the similarity statement as fast as possible. So one of the first shortcuts we can use is the angle-angle similarity. So angle-angle similarity tells us that if we have two pairs, so there's one pair, Here's my second pair. If we have two pairs of angles that are the same, then these triangles are proportional, okay? They're similar, they're similar triangles. So if we look at the one on the right, so since angle A is congruent to angle D and angle C is congruent to angle F, then we can make the similarity statement, right? We have angle angle, which means that this third angle is also going to be equal to one another. Okay, so we don't have to fill that in. We don't have to find out what it is. We already know these triangles are similar. As soon as you have two pairs of angles that are similar, the triangles are similar. Or are similar. Okay, so now similarity statement, I'm going to start with angle A. Okay, so I start with angle A here, which means for my other similarity statement, I have to start with angle D. So I'm going to put D here. Okay, from A, I'm going to go to C, where it's the two hash marks. So from D, I'm going to go to F, where it's the two hash marks. So from A to C, from D to F. And then lastly, we could just fill it in, B and E. I know I kind of went away from the uh, ABC and the DEF. But again, you can have any combination as long as it stays uh, consistent with the other triangle. Now the example on the bottom, the triangles, explain why these triangles are similar. Okay, and we're looking at this again, it looks like we have one pair of angles there. And we have a second pair of angles. So we have angle angle here again. So since angle A is congruent to angle D and angle B is congruent to angle E, now we can, remember that we can also assume that C on this side is similar to C on that side. So now we can make our statement. So now I'm going to again start with A. The one hash mark, so I'm going to start with D. From the one hash mark, I'm going to go to the two. From the one hash mark, I'm going to go to the two. And then last is C for both of these. All right, so two to three. There we have it, angle, angle. This one here says identify the similar triangles. This time it's asking us to find X and the measures of the indicated sides. So we're going to find this AB and we're going to find AC. Right? Those are the ones with X's. We don't know what those side lengths are. Okay, so let's first determine are these similar? A and H, C and J, so we have two pairs of angles that are similar. So we have the angle angle theorem here. We know these triangles are similar. Now let's start matching these up. And I'm gonna start with the side that's easier. So AC, right, this goes from one hash marks to two hash marks. One hash marks to two hash marks. 
is going to be proportional to hj. So I'm going to put x plus 5 over 6. And then I'm going to put my other sides. I have ab and I have gh. Right? It goes from the one hash marks to the empty, from the one hash marks to the empty. And that's x plus 1 over 3. Okay, so we're going to assume that these are proportions. We know these triangles are similar triangles, so the sides are proportionate. So we're going to do a cross multiplying here. So we have 3 times x plus 5 is equal to 6 times x plus 1. And we're going to do our distributing. Right. Or you can divide by... Th no, distributing is a lot easier here. So we'll have 3x plus 15 equals 6x plus 6. Subtract 3x, subtract 3x. And I'm running out of room. 3x plus 6 is equal to 15. Okay, I'm going to pull this up here. And I'm going to simplify it from here. So I just rewrote the same thing over there for more room. So I'm going to subtract 6, subtract 6. I get 9 equals 3x. And then once we divide by 3 on both sides, we get that x equals 3. Okay. So now that we know that x equals 3, we can find what these side lengths are, right, by plugging in 3. So we're going to plug in 3, and we're going to plug in 3. So 3 plus 1 gives us a 4 here, so AB is 4, and then AC, we plug in 3, 3 plus, 3 plus 5 is 8. Okay. And then don't forget our similarity statement here. On exams, for some reason, students forget to write the similarity statement, even though we put a little blank like this on there for it. So let's do triangle ABC. Triangle ABC, so from A, the one hash mark, I went to empty, from one hash mark to empty, is going to be G to H. Oh, sorry, H to G. Let me just confirm that. Yeah, H to G to J. All right, bottom part. So this one's going to require a little bit of drawing. So suppose a person 10 feet 5 inches tall casts a shadow that is 3 feet 6 inches long. So we're dealing with triangles, so we only really need straight lines. So here's my person, 5 foot 10, is casting a shadow, and it's not, it's not drawn to scale, 3 feet 6 inches. At the same time, a flag post, so here's a flag post, casts a shadow that is 12 feet long. To the nearest foot, how tall is the flagpole? So here is my flagpole. How tall is that? We don't know, so I'm going to put an X. So remember in those prereq skills that we don't want to start simplifying when we have feet and inches. We want to convert it all to feet. Everything has to be feet. So remember how we do it. We got 5 foot 10 inches there. So we want to take that 10 inches divided by 12. 10 divided by 12 gives me 0.833. Okay. So when I redo this, and you don't really have to redo it, but I'm just showing. We're going to rewrite this as 5.833. And that's in feet. And the bottom, we're going to do the same thing. We have 6 inches here. So we're going to take 6 divided by 12. And that gives us 0.5. So on the bottom, instead of writing 3 feet 6 inches, I know 6 inches is 0.5. So I'm going to write 3.5. Okay. And this one stays the same. OK, 
Okay, so we're no longer going to use this one, the first one, because we converted those inches to feet, so we're going to use this here. Okay, now let's set up our proportions. Let's do this side first. So we got 5.833 over the height of the flagpole, that's x, is equal to, we started with the person, so we got to start with the person's shadow, 3.5 over 12. Okay, so keep that in mind too. So if you started with this triangle, then the other proportion of this triangle has to be on top as well. Okay, now we do our cross multiplying. 3.5 times x gives me 3.5. 12 times 8, 5.833333 gives me uh, it's 69.999999. I'm going to round it to 70. Okay. And lastly, we divide by 3.5. Divide by 3.5. We get that x equals 20. So 20 feet. That flagpole is going to be 20 feet tall. Okay, so now side angle side. So it's given when you're given two triangles, it's a two sets of corresponding sides. So the corresponding sides means that the sides are right next to each other. Are proportional and the included angle is congruent. So corresponding sides, like in this example here, M and N are corresponding. They're touching one another. They share an angle. And that angle they share is corresponding to the other triangle's angle. Okay, so they have to share the same sides, the same corresponding sides, and the same angle. Okay, so in a way you can look at it like this. So side, angle, side. Side, angle, side. All right, let me erase these. Okay. Let's go down to the example. So determine whether the triangles are similar. Explain your reasoning. So on the big triangle, AB, so here's AB, is 6. EF is 4. AC is 10.5. And DE is 7. Okay, so now we're going to look to see, are these two proportions at least the same? So 6 divided by 4 gives me a 1.5. So 1.5 up here. And then a 10.5 divided by 7 gives us 1.5. Okay. So now in order to understand it, this side is proportional to this side. I'm not saying equal, they're saying those are proportional. This side's proportional to this side, and the included angle, so the angle that's touching both of those is this one here. They're both 30 degrees. So we have a side, an angle, a side. A side, an angle, a side. So now we can make our similarity statement. Let's say triangle, let's start with angle A. So I started with the 30 degrees, so I'm going to start with the 30 degrees here, E. Okay, now this part might be a little hard, but I'm going to run, so look, let's look at the numbers. I have a 6 and I have a 10.5. From A, I'm going to run to C, and I'm going to run along the bigger number, 10.5. So from A to C. So for E, I have to do the same. I have 7 and I have 4. I have 7 and I have 4, so I'm going to run across the bigger number. That's going to be D. And then last we have B and F. Okay, side, side, side similarity statement. So it's two triangles, and this time 
it means all sides are proportional. So in this example here, you see how we have m, n, and p. On the right side, we have m times x, we have n times x, and p times x. So all three of those sides got multiplied by the same variable. They got multiplied by x, which means they got increased by the same amount. Right? So the proportions are all the same. Okay, so anytime you have the proportions that are all the same, you have three sides with the same proportions, your triangles are similar. So let's start filling these in. So we have a bigger triangle and you have a smaller triangle. So for a big triangle, let's look at DE. And it also helps on all these if you match up the longest side, the longest side, shortest side, shortest side, um, and medium with medium. So let's start with the, with the longest side. So the longest side is going to be DC. Right, so I want to fill in with DC right here. Right, so this is the longest side. It's a, it's just a, it's a helpful way to also tell. So I know CD is 12. AC, that's the longest side here too, right? Four, out of four, four, six, and eight. Eight is the longest, AC. Okay, now I'm gonna go the smallest. I have AB. AB, I see right here. Right, I know AB is four. Smallest here is DE, so six. And this was the smallest. And then the medium, BC, and CE, nine. Okay, so now if all three of these proportions are the same, we have similar triangles. Six divided by four gives us 1.5. 12 divided by 8 gives us 1.5. And 9 divided by 6 gives us 1.5. So all three of these proportions are the same, so we have similar triangles. So now we can make our similarity statement. We could say triangle A. Let's just do triangle ABC just to make it easy. ABC, so A went across the purple side. So we got to start with D. D, E, C. Right? So we started with the side where the shortest side meets the longest side. Shortest side meets the longest side is D. So just a hint for where to start if it gets confusing. Okay? And the last one. So this one, it helps if you go ahead and color coordinate this. But pretty much what, it, what we're, we're trying to get you to visualize here is that out of this triangle here, there are three possible triangles. So the first triangle we have is the smallest one, and that's taken out just from right here. So this is the same thing as this. So we just pulled it out. The second one, we have the medium sized triangle, and that's just pulled out from right here, right? So it's a matter of matching up the sides for these. So notice how this one got flipped around, it's right, the 90 degree angle, it got flipped and it's now over here. Now it's on the right side. So it just took a little tumble. And the last one, which is a little hard for some people to see, it's this large triangle here, right, which includes the other two triangles. So we do have three different triangles there. So the goal here is to orient these triangles and transfer the sides onto the ones that we orient. So now, if we go ahead and look at the first one, the, the bottom left example. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first draw my three triangles. I know I'm gonna have a large triangle. I'm gonna have a medium sized triangle. And I'm gonna have a small triangle. Okay, and I know I have, they're all gonna have 90 degrees. I'm gonna start with my big triangle. So here's my big triangle. That's what I'm looking at. There's my 90 degree angle. So the only piece of information I get, and notice that that X is not included in any of the side lengths. So the side lengths are the red that I highlighted. So the X is not included, we can't transfer the X. But what we can transfer is this 16, and we have to notice that that 16 only counts up to right there. So this side is actually 16 plus 9. So 16 plus 9 gives me 25, 
if I'm looking at it, this is the hypotenuse of this triangle. So the hypotenuse, 25. Okay, now the medium sized triangle, I'm gonna highlight here. Okay, and there's my 90 degree angle. So if I look at it, it's not too far off. So if I match up the sides, this here, this side X, there's my 90 degree angle. It's the short leg on the bottom. So X is gonna be right there. Okay, and then from the 90 degree angle running up is 16. So I have my 16 right here. And finally, my large triangle. Oh, sorry, not large, small. Or a little small triangle. Okay, there's my 90 degree angle here, right? Because if this is 90, then the other side has to be 90 because that's a straight line. So for my 90, and that's almost the same way exactly as well. So if you look at this, I wonder if I can move this. Ooh. Uh, I can't really flip it though. Okay, so if I look there, my short side here is 9. And for the 90 degree angle going up is X, so my X is right there. And then I don't know what the hypotenuse is. I don't have that piece of information there. Okay, so now that we transferred all the information there, we have to figure out which two triangles we're going to use to set up a proportion. So in order to set up the proportion, we need to have two pieces of information given on two different triangles. So notice how for the middle triangle, we have the right side and the bottom side. And for the small triangle, we have the right side and the bottom side. So thus, that's the one we can use. This triangle here doesn't give us enough information to be utilized. So we're going to use the small and medium, and we're going to set up our proportions. So I'm going to set up 16 over x, 16 over x is equal to, so I started with a medium sized triangle, I got to start with x, x over 9. Now I cross multiply, we get that x times x is x squared, equal to 16 times 9 is 144. I am going to square root both sides, and we get that x equals 12. Does it ask us to do anything with that? No. Okay, and that's final. So we just solve for x. Now let's look at the one on the right, our last example. I'm going to erase this so we have enough room. So let's redraw our triangles. We got a big triangle. Eee, that's horrible, 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 horrible. We got a big triangle. We got a medium triangle. And we got a small triangle. Okay. Um, for this one, I'm going to start with my small triangle first. Here's my small triangle. There's my 90 degree angle. So notice that it's positioned exactly the same. And I can just go ahead and transfer that right away. That's nine, my hypotenuse is 15. That was pretty simple. Okay, now we can look at the medium sized triangle. Okay, medium sized triangle, um, I don't have this length here, I don't have this length here. So chances are we're not gonna be using this, but there is a way to figure out what this length here is. Okay, so this length here for the medium sized triangle, and this is, this very good skill to have because this is going to come up quite often. You're going to especially be tested on it. So we know that this whole distance is x, right? But we're only looking for this distance here. So what we want to do is if we know this whole distance is x, we want to subtract away this 9. Right? We want to subtract, 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 subtract till we're given that much. So the equation for this side is going to be, so just for right here, is going to be x minus 9, right? And it makes sense because if we add this whole side length together, x minus 9 plus 9 just gives us x, right? x minus 9 plus 9, if we add these two sides together, gives us x. Let me erase all this so there's no confusion. 
So we know that's x minus 9. So when we're looking at our medium sized triangle, when we look at that side length from the 90 degrees going up, we have x minus 9. So I'm just going to write x minus 9 here. And then lastly, our larger triangle, there's my short leg, there's my 90 degrees going up, and there's my hypotenuse. Okay, so hypotenuse, I know that's my 90 there, my hypotenuse is the x, right? x is from here to here. So I know this is x, and then my short leg, so here's my 90 degrees, and I'm running across it, 15 is there. Again, determine which two triangles you can use to set up your proportion. We can use the big triangle, small triangle, big triangle, small triangle, right? This one doesn't give us information. This is the one that we don't want to use. Okay, now setting up our proportion, we got, let's go ahead and start with X. So I got X over 15 is equal to 15 over 9. So when we simplify this out, we get 9 times x is 9x equals 15 times 15 is 225. Divide by 9 on both sides. Ooh, bad color to use. We get x equals let's see, 225 divided by 9, 25. So going back here, we know that from here to here now is 25. And remember that this was x minus 9. So x minus 9, so that would be 25 minus 9. This section here is 16, right? 16 plus 9 gives us 25. 